Hello, this is your instructor, Mr. Ellsworth, and today we're going to talk about uh, Tutorial 9. Okay, this is a D&D &D or Dungeons and Dragons program, but more importantly, it's for um, organizing and using functions to keep the main body of a program simple. Okay, the um, output of our program needs to look like this. So we need uh, a player name. We're going to need a uh, character name. We need the character races and character attributes. And you can see the attributes are here, uh, two digit numbers. If you're not familiar with Dungeons and Dragons, um, attributes run from uh, a minimum of three to a maximum of 18, but you use multiple die rolls uh, to get a somewhat better average. So the average is probably around 12 or 13 for each attribute. And then we have a starting level. Uh, by default, that would be uh, a character level would be one. So the first thing we're going to need to do on our uh, input is actually read in uh, the player's name. And so we'll request that. And same thing for the character name. Now character race is a little different because there are certain character race uh, races available. It's not one that you make up, it's predefined. And so in this document there's a list of the predefined uh, character races. And you can see that we use uh, enumerate to define them. And remember enumerants are basically creating a new data type and in here we're creating a data type called race name. And it has elements of a dragonborn, dwarf, elf, gnome, halfling, half-elf, half-orc, human, and tiffling. And the advantage of using enumerates is that we can use these names rather than trying to remember, oh, uh, a gnome is, has a value of four. And then a little bit further down here is a change to the attributes. So a character that decides to be um, a dragonborn, its strength attribute will be uh, pushed up by two and its charisma ap attribute pushed up by one. And here, humans, all attributes go up by one. If it was a halfling, the dexterity goes up by two and so on. So now to actually generate these attributes, we're using a random number generator. And we have six of them that we have to calculate. Uh, ST stands for strength, DX stands for dexterity, CT stands for constitution, IN stands for intelligence, WS stands for wisdom, and CH stands for charisma. Okay. Now we're trying to emulate it just like if we were doing the hand rolls uh, in an actual Dungeons and Dragons games. And so for these attributes, we use three uh, die six and roll them to get the number from three uh, to 18. And it's usually rolled uh, several times and the best value is kept. Now the die roll will actually create a function to actually do the die rolling uh, and, and we'll build into it uh, the number of times it has to repeat and the value to return will actually be uh, the attribute value that we want. So this statement here that's highlighted says d6 roll equals c int parenthesis, int, parenthesis, parenthesis, six times random, uh, closing parenthesis, 
plus one. That'll actually generate a value for us um, with the values of one to six. Now, um, we have to use this function here called randomize at the beginning of the program, uh, which um, initializes the random number generator, so it has a, um, a unique seed, and it uses the clock time um, to actually create a seed value, which is plugged into the uh, random number generator. So that way, each time you run the program, you'll have a different set of random numbers. If you didn't do that, if you didn't do randomize, it would actually repeat the exact same set of numbers because the default seed value would be zero. And so it's just a um, linear, uh, random numbers are just a linear function. And so whatever your starting value is, uh, and if you use zero every time, the sequence would be exactly the same. So that's why we use uh, the clock time, the system time, uh, to generate a unique seed value so that our random number generator, it's, it's really a pseudo-random number generator, uh, starts at a unique place each time. So here's how we would start our code in submain. And you can see we're declaring our variables, uh, CHA for Charisma, CON for Constitution, DEX for DEX, INT for Intelligence, STR for Strength. And then there are a few other variables uh, we're going to declare. WIS for wisdom. We need a variable for character level. We need uh, the character name, that, that it would be a string. Same thing with the player name, that would also be a string. And then a character race. And notice that it's of the data type uh, race. So let's think about what our program is going to do. What do we want to happen in main? Well, remember, all programs have input, processing, and output. And in our submain, that's exactly what we have. We're going to get our input data, our attributes. And then remember, uh, depending on what race type was picked, the attribute could be modified. So we have to have uh, a function to modify the attributes. Then finally, the output would be printing the character. And so our output would look something like this. Uh, this is our input. Please enter the character name. Uh, please enter the character level. Uh, please uh, select the uh, character race. And notice that we did it as a, a menu structure. So you just select a letter, in this case, for human selected age, and then it prints everything out. So let's take a look at how we did this in the actual code. Remember I said you need to use um, randomize to initialize a seed value for the random number generator? So we do that there. Uh, when you type this program in, uh, number generator this is really on the same line but as in a document of course uh, automatically rolls it uh, to the next line when you get um, too long of a line and then here we're reading our input data so we have a function called input data and that's going to give us our character name player name the character level and the character race it's all pushed off all of the input stuff is pushed off into its own function okay uh, once we have that information, then we could go to the processing section where we actually generate the attributes. So we just call a function to do that, and we just supply all of the attributes. Uh, we're passing by reference. When you see the actual function, you'll see these are passed by reference. And the values will be calculated and, and returned. And then we'll go in and modify. Um, modify the attributes. Notice that we pass all of the same attributes, but there's one extra. The character race attribute. So this would be like if it's a dragonborn or an elf. And then finally, we're printing the uh, character data sheet with all of the information. 
Now this is uh, passed by um, passed by value, not passed by reference, because the print function doesn't return anything back to the main program. It's just using uh, the existing variables, the existing data. Okay, and notice how this is the end of of main. Notice that this is really a very very simple program, even though it's really very complex. Notice how simple this is. This is pretty easy to write. You got your variable declaration. Uh, randomizing, uh, initializing the random number generator with the randomize function. Uh, input data, generate the attributes, modify the attributes, and print it out. Our input, output, and processing. Now let's uh, take a look at some more of the details of these uh, functions because these are functions. So let's take a look at the input data function first. So the first thing I did for the input data function is, is I wrote some pseudocode to say, uh, what am I trying to do? Well, I need to get the player name. So I'm going to call a function, get player name. I need to get the character name. So I'm going to call a function, get character name. I need to get the character level. So I'm going to call a function called get character level. And I also need to get the character race. So I'm going to call a function, get character race. And then the input data function is all done and it just returns. Again, look at how simple this looks. Again, we're pushing the complexity down into the functions. It makes up what would ordinarily be an extremely complex program much, much simpler to look at, much, much simpler to understand, and much simpler to write. Okay, this is our uh, header information for the input data function. Uh, notice that um, I'm passing everything by reference, so uh, that's bidirectional. It passes in and it passes back out. Okay. Uh, C name would be character name. P name would be player name. C level would be the character level and C race would be the character race. And I didn't give the actual data types here because um, the compiler actually figured that out for us by its context. Okay, now look at uh, uh, this function. Again, it's very simple. We got one, two, three, four code lines. So this is, uh, again, we're pushing the um, uh, complexity down to another level. So the first thing we're getting is the player name. Okay, and then next we're going to get the character name. And then we're going to get the character level. And then we're going to get the character race. Okay. Notice that I put a comment there to uh, say what I'm doing at each step. Okay. So let's take a look at uh, get player name function next. Okay, here's the function get player name. I, again, I wrote some pseudocode. What do I want to do? And notice again, it's very simple. I'm telling, um, I want to, uh, I'm going to write out to the screen, please enter the player name. Then I'm going to read the name in, and then I'm going to return, and it's done. Okay. This is the one for get the character name. It's almost identical to player name. I'm just going to write out, please enter the character name. I'm going to read the uh, name that the user types in, and I'm going to return. That's it. Next, we're going to do uh, get the character level. Now, there is a restriction, so I set up a, a loop. In Dungeons and Dragons, the value has to be um, uh, equal to or greater than 1, but uh, or equal to 20 or less than 20. So it has to be in that range. So we set up a loop uh, to force the user to enter a value between uh, 1 and 20. Uh, it wouldn't make any sense if they added like negative 5. You know, how can you have a level of negative 5? And, you know, somebody may want to create a character that's level 50. Well, Dungeons and Dragons don't, doesn't really support level 50, so... 
it's restricted to uh, 1 to 20. And so we put a simple loop in there, but it doesn't really add that much complexity. Uh, notice, uh, begin the while loop, uh, enter the character level, read the character level, and the loop if the character level is greater than or equal to 1 or less than or equal to 20. So that'll cause the loop to terminate. Uh, otherwise, it'll keep looping until the user puts in the proper value. Okay. Let's take a look at the code to implement these functions. Um, get player name. Uh, notice that I created a string inside the function. Um, and I'm writing out, please enter the player name. I'm reading it. And then I'm returning player name. Notice I defined the function as string so I can return a string data type. Get character name, it's basically identical. The only thing we say here is character name and uh, character name as the uh, variable that we're returning. Get to character level is slightly more complicated because we have a range restriction. Notice I set the rate up in my uh, while loop. So while character level is less than 1 or greater than 20, it'll keep on looping. And notice that when I define character level, I set it initially to 0. If you have a value other than 0 in here, if you had a value between 1 and 20, uh, the loop would never execute. It would just, uh, the function would just terminate. So here we have to make sure we initialize a value that's outside this range. And so it asks for the level. And then we read the level in, but the while loop uh, checks, built in as part of the while loop itself. And if it's, uh, you know, if it's between one and 20, uh, the loop will terminate and it'll return the level back to the program. Okay. Um, I'm going to stop at this point. I'm trying to keep the, the videos um, to less than 20 minutes. So we'll go over some more on uh, another uh, day. So um, that's it for this video.